This is one of my own patterns. I daydreamed it up. As a matter of fact, I dreamed it up driving down the highway. So I call it a highway hopper. Um, we spent quite a bit of time this year in Canada, and as I'm driving back toward the States, my wife's sound asleep. The lab's got her head, she's standing on the seat, but she's got her head on the chin on the dash, just watching the world go by. So I just kind of daydreamed. I tried to take all the different hoppers that I have used, I have seen, combine them all, and make one kind of my own. Uh, I didn't know if it would work, and I'll tell you more about that as I get further into the fly. But uh, it's been a very, very productive fly for me, very productive. Deer hair for the tail. And I'll go ahead and get all that bound down. And then I'm going to clip all this off. I'm going to bind it all down. Well, if I can capture it all, that's close enough. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take, this is Zappa Gap, with a brush. And we're just going to brush a little bit of Zappa Gap on there. It's going to make that fly a whole lot more durable. Uh, it'll hold together a lot longer than normal. And I would rather tie one good fly as ten bad ones. For the hackle that I'm going to palmer over the body, make sure it is undersized. That makes a whole lot of difference to this fly. For the dubbing or the body, what I've done is taken Superfine, which in my opinion is one of the best dubbings out there, and to me a hopper does not have a true yellow body. Uh, part of it is, is uh, an olive or a yellowish color, so I've taken yellow and green and olive and mixed them together. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this dubbing mix on, on the thread. And you, the problem that most people have dubbing is they put too much material on. You don't need a whole lot of material. You can always go back and build up. Uh, you don't need to do that at all. Don't know if that's enough or not, but we'll see what happens. Now I'm going to take one wrap of dubbing behind that hackle. That way that hackle won't be falling off the end down onto the body material. Run up to the front and palmer this hackle forward. If I can get a hold of it. And you don't need it real closely wrapped together. Uh, I have seen a lot of hackle, a lot of hoppers. Uh, the Joe's hopper is a primary example where they'll wrap a very large hackle on and then trim it down. So for this one, I just took the uh, uh, hackle and ran it forward like that. Now I'm going to put a little bit more dubbing on. I want this build up a little bit at the head. A hopper has a larger head than the rest of the body. So I'll come to the eye, back again, back and forth. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to take another piece of deer hide, deer hair. Again, get rid of the under fur. If you don't get rid of that under fur, you're going to have a terrible time stacking that stuff. It may never come out even. Give it a quick stack. I want this now to go back about the length of the tail. So I'll just lay it on there, cinch it down, cinch it down, and there it is. Now I'm going to trim this off exactly like an elk hair caddis, the head. That's going to give a little bit more of a head to this fly. I don't know if it helps it float any better. I can't tell you that. The only thing I know is it caught fish. Now. 
I'm going to put rubber lakes on it. I do not use round rubber lakes. This material is called Super Floss. It comes in a lot of different uh, colors. This one, it, and it's rubber. This one happens to be brown. So I'll put this Super Floss on, on my side first, or you can do the other side first, it doesn't matter. Right at that same tie-in point, and you want that leg out to the rear. I'm going to bring it back past the tail, then I'll put it on the other side. Again, bind it down that same place. Bring it to the rear, clip it off, and get it bound down good. I'm going to come in and trim these off even, and I'll do the same with the back. Just to make sure they're, and those are pretty even. Now, this is the way I left the fly originally. I caught fish with it, but I couldn't see it. Uh, the fish would come up and take it. I wouldn't see, always see the take, but I did catch fish with it. So I went back to the uh, time uh, vise. I took the flies that I had tied, put them back in the vise, started my tying thread right there again, and then I took a piece of this yellow closed cell foam. I'm going to lay that right on top and cinch it down. Come in here, clip it off. And you can trim this foam up. You can do with it whatever your little heart desires. I did find that I could see the fly. If the fly were to land crazy in the water, upside down or whatever, many times that foam, after it floated for a short distance, would right the fly so it was floating correctly. I know that a hopper does not have these little feelers out here. I left them on, I can't tell you why, but it works. I gave it to some other fly fishermen in the river I was on. They had good luck with it, came back and wanted more. So this is my daydream fly, it's called a highway hopper. I did dream it up totally on my own. I don't know if there's any more out there like it or not, I don't think so. But there's a highway hopper and it does work very well.